In this video, we're going to look at a few topics related to quadratic functions. So let's look at this example from the homework. It says, use the graph of f of x to, de to find the x-intercepts of the graph and the zeros of the function. So what are the x-intercepts? Well, notice uh, the x-intercepts are where we cross the x-axis. And the x-intercepts are really ordered pairs. So notice we have an x-intercept at negative 3, right? So the first x-intercept is negative 3 comma 0. So don't just put the number negative 3, put negative 3, 0. And we also have one over here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5, 0. Now it says to put commas to separate your answers. So let me do that here. We have two commas. And let me click check answer. And notice it says we got it right. Okay, now what are the zeros of the function? Well, the zeros of the function are just the values of x that give you zero as an output. So essentially they're the same as the x-intercepts, only these are just numbers. So we just have negative 3 and 5. Okay, so it says to put a comma to separate our answer. So x equals negative 3 and x equals 5, those are the zeros of this function. Okay, let's move on to another problem. This says find the zeros of the function. Now this time we're not given the graph of the function, we're given a formula for our function. And the formula involves b's instead of x's, but that's no problem. The question is what inputs would give you an output of zero? Okay, so I've typed out the problem over here. Find the zeros of this function. f of b equals b squared plus 10b plus 24. So what inputs for b can we uh, put in that will give us an output of zero? Now sometimes you have to use the quadratic formula. There's just no way around it. But I think this one we can factor. Okay, and notice I think it will factor to b. Well, we're going to have a b and a b to give us b squared. And I think 6 and 4 will work, right? Plus 6 and plus 4. Because if we FOIL this out, we get b times b is b squared. We have a 6b and a 4b gives us 10b, and 6 times 4 is 24. So notice b equals uh, negative 6, and also b equals negative 4 will work. So if we go back over here to the problem, we can type in negative 6 and negative 4. So let's put a comma between our answers. It doesn't matter which order you write them in. You could write the negative 4 first and the negative 6 second. But notice uh, we get the correct answer. Okay, some of the problems though, you'll have to use the quadratic formula and there's just no way around that. In fact, I think on this example, you'd have to use the, the quadratic formula. Okay, and let's do one more problem. Um, let's look at this problem here. Consider the quadratic function below. So f of x equals x squared minus 14x plus 48. Find the vertex, find the axis of symmetry, determine whether there's a maximum or minimum uh, value, and find that value, and then graph the function. Okay, and notice that I've typed the problem here. So to find the vertex, what we need to do is, uh, first of all, find the axis of symmetry, right? Axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative b over 2a. Okay, but notice this problem, the b is negative 14, so it's negative negative 14 over 2a, but a is 1. Okay, so what we get is 14 over 2, which is 7. So x equals 7 is our axis of symmetry. That's going to be the answer for part b. But how do we find the vertex? Well, our vertex is going to be 7 comma f of 7. So what is f of 7? Well, if we plug in 7 into our formula, we get 7 squared minus 14 times 7 plus 48. And so that's 49 minus, now 7 times 14, I think is 98, plus 48. And if you work this out, 49 plus 48, I think is 97. And 97 minus 98 is negative 1. So f of 7 is negative 1. That tells us that 7 negative 1 is our vertex. Okay, so the vertex is 7 negative 1. The axis of symmetry is x equals 7. It's not just the number 7, it's x equals 7 because it's the equation of a vertical line, x equals 7. Find the maximum or minimum value. Well, notice minus 1 is going to be our maximum or minimum value. The question is which one is it, a max or a min? Well, since we have a positive leading coefficient for our function, the graph opens up like this. So the minus 1 is going to be the minimum value. There's not going to be a maximum. We are going to have a bottom of the hill here, though, right? We'll have a lowest point, and that lowest this point uh, will be minus 1. Okay, so let's go back to the problem. Okay, so let's remember that our vertex was 7 minus 1, so let's type this in. By the way, I don't like the wording of this. It, this is the vertex occurs at, and you might think, oh, it occurs at 7, but it's it's an ordered pair, so the vertex is uh, 7 minus 1. So let's, let's type that in. Okay, find the equation for the axis of symmetry. Now, if you just type in 7, notice what will happen. 
Okay, incorrect, right? The, the axis of symmetry is a vertical line, and vertical lines always have the equation x equals some number. Okay, so we checked our answer, that's what we get. By the way, if you just plugged in minus 1 for the vertex, that'd be wrong. The vertex is an ordered pair, 7 minus 1. Okay, part C, determine whether the parabola has a maximum or minimum value, uh, and, and then find this value. Well, notice, again, it's a parabola that opens up because we have a positive lean coefficient, so there will be a lowest point. There will be a minimum, so it's going to be part B, and that minimum value is minus 1. Okay, and finally, uh, use the graphing tool uh, on the right to graph the function. So let's click to enlarge the graph. Uh, so notice we're going to pick this one here that has a parabola. Okay, and we're going to try to plot the point. Let's see, what was it? 7 minus 1. 7 minus 1 is right here. And then 7 minus 1, the, the question is, what should the parabola look like? Is it, you know, How is the parabola going to look? Well, it's not going to open down. It is going to open up, but how steep will it open up? Well, it turns out that if you have a uh, leading coefficient of 1, which we do here, right? Our leading coefficient is 1, right, for 1x squared. That means if you go to the right 1, so we go over to 8, and then we go up 1, well, the point will go through there. Now, if the leading coefficient were 2, that means if we went to the right 1, now remember, each of these tick marks represent a half, right? So if we went over to the right one, we go up two. We'd end up right here if this were a two x squared. Or a three x squared, we'd go over to the right one, and then we go up one, two, three. We'd be up at a point like this. And if it were negative three, if you went to the right one, you go down three. So this is the point you wanna you wanna pick right here. So now at the bottom, let's click save, and then we'll click uh, check our answer down here. And notice we got the correct answer. Okay, so the graphing is definitely a little bit tricky. Uh, there's a few problems where you have to do something like this, and it's especially tricky getting that parabola to be, have the exact right shape, uh, but that's how you do it.